Welcome to Attican Plays Railroad Corporation. All right. Hi, this is Attican, and welcome to Series 11, Episode 6 of our Railroad Corporation Civil War uh, DLC playthrough. We're playing through with no passengers, no mail to make it more challenging. And that what you just saw me do there is open up a finance department. Now, why did I do that? We aren't using finance because we're on tight margins. That's our insurance policy. I keep harping on this because it's so important. If you are buying things like raw materials, or in our case, we're even buying um, uh, tools and uh, steel and uh, uh, alcohol, whiskey, when you're buying things that are expensive, or even if they're not, if you buy a bunch of things in a row, you can go broke from almost any position and get negative 50,000 and get fired. So that uh, opening the finance is really our insurance. We're, we're, going, we're not going to use it to grow, but we're going to use it if we need it. If we get in a place where we suddenly go negative, we're going to, going to use it. So we're at 106,000 right now. And I'm just looking around to see what can we do? What can we get into next? What do we need, what do, we need to do? And I'm also looking to see if we have any any holes, any any spot, any gotchas. And one gotcha we have is our biggest strength. And look at that. Look, look at look at that. We just went from 120 up to or 102, whatever it was, to 37 in the hole. And why is that? Because we just had trains buying tools. We had a train buying tools, and they're trying trying to buy tools, and we actually ran out of money to buy it. So now we're going to use our insurance policy. We're going to open up a bond. We can open up a huge bond and go ahead and do some expansion stuff. Decided not to do that. We're going to open up a bond to kind of keep us safe, to give us some cash, to cover that uh, negative. And now we're going to watch it very closely to see if we've got enough cash because we can still open up, uh, you know, get a loan if we have to. But there, we're coming back. But see, that all that took was two trains that happened to hit at the same time buying those expensive tools and that you know are coming from someone else's tool factory. And had we just let that run, I'm pretty sure we would have gone 50000 in the hole and been done. Because you can see, we took out $100,000. we are down at $35,000. we are going, still going negative. How is that? If we have such a good economy, how could we be going negative? It's all because of the timing of, of when this stuff hits and when it doesn't hit. And if you get all these purchases hitting at the same time, uh, you know, it can kill you. So here I'm going to do something that uh, I wish I'd done long ago. We're going to get a little best friend and we're going to buy and sell steel. Now here I am complaining that buying expensive stuff is what makes you go broke. But watch what happens when we get this little old um, best friend up here to Martinsburg to buy and sell our steel. And also, look, here we are still buying expensive stuff. I'm going to go out and take as big a loan as we can, $158,000 loan. And that should give us enough cash, hopefully, to keep us going. So we're going to run that uh, little best friend out there to Martinsburg and have a more consistent, anytime the tool factory can take another tool, we're going to sell it to it. See, look at that. 158 is down. We're negative. Our, look at this. It's unreal. We've, uh, we've already burned through that $150,000 uh, from the loan. Now we're turning back around, going back up, and look at this. We're rapidly going back up. Well, again, you could, you could take the idea, oh, it's great. You're making lots of money, but no, this is way too volatile. Way too easy for this to get uh, have a mistiming and really mess us up. So the army wants uh, tools. We're going to say no thanks because uh, we're focusing our tool delivery right now, I believe, on the uh, south. I'll have to double check that. But here comes, uh, let's see, have we gotten him up there yet? No, I don't think so. We still don't have our little uh, John, John Bull. I'm actually looking for him now. There he is. Let's follow him in, into, uh, into port, so to speak, and, and see what happens when we just can start buying and selling steel as fast as we can. Yeah. 
So we buy it for 21,000 and sell for 30 some thousand. Now watch our money. <laughs> this is fun to watch. Look at our money. That little best friend is just ripping the money out. Why? Because he's he's grabbing that steel, which we made plenty of, and he is, or well, that factory, that steel mill's made plenty of, and he's getting it over there to the tool factory. Now the tool factory is fully loaded up with tools, it'll, or uh, steel, it'll keep running, and that, that will allow us to keep selling the lumber in there, and it also, look what it did to our cash. So uh, <laughs> we have a very, we're almost as volatile as the U.S. stock market right now. Um, so uh, our economy now, again, we're back on strong footing, but we were very dangerously close to going broke right there. Um, all right, so now we can resume this guy. He was part of the problem, buying those tools as quickly as he could. And that's weird that it got caught. It's supposed to load four. It got stopped. Oh, I, I see why. Because it died on the purchase of, of one of them. It, it, it stopped because we were too far negative. It couldn't afford it, and it, and it paused. So, which is a good thing, again, because we would have we would have been gone. So we want to boost up our uh, ore uh, delivery a little bit to make sure we're keeping pace with that. So we don't want the ore to slow us down. But uh, now our economy's looking better. But see, even there, even we were over 600 and some, and now we're down to 400. Uh, it, it, it's very volatile right now. Now see, uh, uh, two I'd love to have. Cotton costs 45% less, wow. And wood costs forty percent less. Another less, another wow. So, uh, going to look through this and see if there's anybody we can do without. <clears throat> Steel costs you less. We probably want to hang on to her. We want to keep the two administrators to lower the salaries and, and uh, give us more room. I think I just got rid of the, oh, the whiskey, uh, the whiskey lady, got rid of the whiskey lady. The one I really want right now is that wood. So we're going to get rid of the one for the coal and iron because we're buying more wood. And we still want to get that cotton guy if we can. But we got to hang on to that steel. It's uh, saving us a lot of money. You can see it there, 8,800 minus 2,200, which is how much we're getting off. It would be much more. It would be 10-something if we, if we didn't have that lady working for us. So I'm trying to figure out what else we can do to start pumping up our um, reputation with the South. And we've got that city of Lynchburg there is just very important. We've got coal over here in Blacksburg. We've got a steel mill in Lynchburg. We've got coal and iron. Iron's up there in Hot Spring just to the north. So that's a great place to run coal and iron into a steel mill. And why would we care about that? Because we can deliver the steel to Richmond, to the army camp, and that's one of the items they want that will increase our reputation. And we need to get that reputation up to 60 in order to uh, get cotton flowing to allow us to have an easier time um, creating the uniforms that we need to do, which is our final mission. So again, I'm just kind of looking around to see what what can we do, what can we do that's going to make us make us more money. But mainly right now, my focus is on how do we build up our reputation with the South. 
and we need a little bit with the north. Our, our northern reputation is 97, and it's showing us there we want to be over 100 plus. And with the south, we want to be 100 plus coming out of this mission. That'll give us, uh, that should give us the flexibility to do what we want in mission three. That way we'll have a good reputation with both uh, sides. So we're going to kind of get into a little bit of uh, um, manufacturing here. And what I want to do is have our own clothing. We want to have our own clothing so that we don't have to pay for those uniforms before we take them off to, um, to the Army camp. We'll get paid for them at the Army camp, but we don't want to have to buy them from someone else's clothing factory. Even though there are clothing factories out there we could use. So we're going to put in our own clothing factory here in Wilmington. Then we're going to go find the train that um, carries the um, leather. We've got a train that's exporting leather down to the port in Salisbury. I'll find it here momentarily. There we go. So we're just going to reroute that guy and say, now nah, from now on you pick up your leather and bring it over here to the clothes factory. And Irop, our buddy Irop, uh, had another good comment. I, I wish I'd thought of this. I just it just didn't occur to me. I really wish I'd thought of it. Uh, we could have been selling that uh, leather on the global market. It's you know the what we got for it would have gone down over time, but we could have been selling that. That would have been another great way to make some money. So put that one back in the back of your head and remember it for next time. I certainly will that we could use the global market to sell our leather and uh, make money on that. Where we, after we put that farm in, we're producing all that leather and it's sitting there. We could have been selling it off. Okay, so now, in order to start this production, we're gonna put a warehouse in Wilmington. It had two open slots. We used one for the clothing. We're gonna put in a warehouse and we're just gonna go out and buy cotton. Cotton costs us $2,400, we can sell it for $4,000, so we should be able to, to uh, get quite a bit of it. Let's see, we're a little over two seventy dollars when we started this. Let's see where we end up. So we bought 11 cotton, took us down to two thirty-five. dollars Now we're gonna go back over here to the market and find that textile factory. And once I punch in and realize what I wanna do there, <laughs> sell it cotton. And we're up to 288. So we actually made 18,000 by uh, buying that cotton and selling it to the textile factory. And then that's going to give us textiles to go to our clothing factory. We'll have to buy them, of course, but um, it's cheaper to buy the cotton and have it produced and buy the textiles than to buy the textiles on the commodity market. And uh, now all we need to do is be able to um, move that stuff over. So we're going, to, we're going to put another little John Bull, or is that right? No, best friend. Another little best friend out there to move the uh, textiles over to our clothing factory. So that's kind of our little local, uh, local uh, transport system. Now we're going to get trains to deliver. First of all, deliver uniforms to uh, Washington. That'll be a very profitable run and it'll, it'll get us started on uh, our ultimate objective, which is to do just that, uh, sell uniforms to uh, the Army camp in Washington. Then we're gonna be also making clothing at the same time, so we might as well sell that to the cities around us that can use it. So there's a line to Baltimore. One to Washington, and that's enough for now, and I'll, I'll end up adding to that later. Okay, so now we should see our first, there we go, their textiles are starting to run. And our little best friend should be over there. 
Now, they want tools in the South. They want 23 carriages. Okay, we are making tools, so we're going to go for this. We're going to give a, a shot at making tools because we already had one tool delivery started, and it's almost done. So all we have to do is finish that one off and then convert everything we had already set up to the next run, and we should be good to go there. And right here, the, uh, they want to charge more for the grain in Dover, and I'm thinking, no way. That would kill us. So... Um, we're going to raise our law office up a little bit so we have four lobbyists and put them all on saying, no, what? No, thank you. You're not going to sell your grain uh, higher. So hopefully we can get that law to fail. And now we've got our best friend over there working and moving textiles over to our clothes. All we need now are some, uh, uh, some leather to show up and we'll start producing uniforms and clothing. Now I would hate to be in a position where I had to do this the whole time. In other words, keep buying the commodity cotton because the, ex the expense of it is just going to get out of control. So here we see that tool, that first tool uh, contract has closed out. So now we're just going to repurpose those same trains to deliver tools to the, to the new contract. And we can catch both trains. We can already, and we get off to a good start of uh, moving them. And since we have the law lobby, we'll start kind of watching. If new laws come up, we'll just check to make sure there isn't anything that that uh, really means something to us. Otherwise, we'll ignore them. So there we go. We've got some uniforms being made. We've got some clothing being made. Uh, we now have a, a, an operating clothes factory, but we do not have a good source for cotton yet. So we're going to, have to try this again and not worry so much about is this actual transaction going to make us money, but recognize that at the end of the day, we will make, uh, should make a net profit uh, out of this, and that way we can keep, the, keep our clothing industry going. Because it's really, uh, in the Civil War uh, DLC, clothing's really strong because of, of the, the whole you make clothing and you make uniforms, so you're getting two for one uh, output, and you can sell them both. Okay, our money's looking much better now, looking pretty solid. And there's plenty of uh, alcohol out here. I'd like to start selling more of that. Still looking for that cotton guy. That's the one I want, but I don't have enough space to get him. I really don't want him to get away from us.
So now it's a question of which one do I think I need the least? <laughs> and the whiskey lady's going to go, and one reason is because she had a negative as well. She actually uh, uh, made paper and books more expensive, which actually, again, that doesn't matter to us. We're, we're selling our own paper. We're not into the book business, so eh, somebody had to go, so she, she drew the short straw. Now we've got our 40% cheaper cotton. And that really, in a way, is an investment in the future. Because again, our goal here is to get our reputation in the South over 60 and open up access to the cotton fields down there. This area is getting a lot of traffic, a lot of activity, so we're going to uh, give it a little bypass around Martinsburg so that trains that want to go past it do not have to uh, deal with uh, that very busy station there. So we're making good progress on our tools. Uh, the bricks to uh, Washington seems to be a little slow. It's been on five for a while now. Our reputation is uh, pretty good. We, did, we need a little more for the Army, for the North, and uh, quite a bit more for the South. So here's one of those, man, I wish I could find those trains. And the amazing thing is, well, I, I'm looking right at one of them. It's even marked with, with a, a, a flag. So if I just came up, I don't know why I couldn't, I couldn't, it just didn't dawn on me to look at that one right there in front of me. It's just so obvious. It's marked, it's got bricks in it, everything. So we're going to run uh, another uh, 40 over and speed up that uh, delivery. And then I realize here, well, here's the other problem with it. You're making the trains run some kind of weird route to get there. So now we're going to go up and uh, merge into the line coming down from Martinsburg. Set it up so it'll go both ways if need be. There, that should help a lot. Should have seen that some time ago. And look at that. All that money we had and now it's down. Look at this. Here we go. Negative again. Look at that, negative 35, all it takes. So we'll open up a $200,000 bond, spread the payments a little bit this time, make sure we have enough money to, to live on to get our cash flow. And see now, then it just whooshes up to 300. Um, you really have to watch this. Look at this, it's almost 400,000. So we've almost doubled we got, we're down to negative. We've opened a bond for 200 and we've more than made that up already. Now look, look at that, look at that. We're back to almost zero again. We are buying lots of expensive items. And the, one of the problems is that we're doing them on contracts, which means that we're not getting paid. So all these uh, tools that we're buying, we're paying a large amount of money for four tools on each train, and we're not getting paid for that contract until it hits the final one and it rolls into the station. That's just, that's, that's tough. Now we've got the bricks, and I wanna think, can we do bricks down to the south? And that's who we want, the south, so yes, we're gonna accept that.
And there I realized this is actually doing a, uh, I decided to use the blue for the uh, north and the red for the south. So the ones that are trying to go to Washington will be marked in blue. The ones trying to go to Richmond will be marked in red. At least that's the idea. Doesn't mean I'll remember to do it every time, but that's the idea. And I'm going to mark this guy as a as the yellow. He's our final objective. He's our gold, I guess we could say. He's our gold objective. And I, I'd even forgotten we were doing research, um, but we've got a few things to finish off on the uh, forty to get it fully upgraded. We didn't get all the way through the research uh, in mission one. But now when we come out of this one, our plan is to come out with a good reputation with both uh, sides, maybe not as great as last time through when we were running passengers and mail, but a good reputation with both sides and a fully researched forney to do the rest of the missions. Now I'm putting these crossovers because I think that's part of the problem when you get those weird ones where some of a train will wait for a long time and there's only one train coming back at him on double track. I think the lack of crossovers cuts down on his options. And if he had the crossovers, he could choose to go a different way and, and get out of some of those deals. So here's, here's one where they will sell coal or lower. And yes, of course we want that. We're burning through the coal. We're using a lot of it. So uh, of course we want to have lower prices for coal. We're using it for bricks and for the steel mill. Now we start up uh, another aging and we've got uh, Another one that's about to finish on us here, so I'm just going to stay here and wait. There we go. And start another research. And the uh, North wanted weapons. No. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Whoever it was wants weapons. They can't have it. Um, we're not ready. We don't have weapons set up to go, and we're not going to take that uh, risk. So now the Army request for bricks is done, and the Southern request for tools. So we're making some progress here. Notice our money jumped up to a million. That's because now the contracts have finished and now we're making a lot of money. So we're just going to repurpose this guy and say, well, go ahead and do your tools, but sell, sell them to the city and make money on them right away. So this guy, I had to think about it for a while, but this guy, I think I just want him to, oh wait, then I realized, no wait, 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 he still has some, he has tools. So what I'm going to do is have him empty out his tools, so we're going to sell off the tools that he's holding, and then I'm just going to have him sit there, because he's got no place to go now, he's just going to sit there until we have a new purpose for him. So let's go get some more cotton. And sell it to the textile factory. Keep that production running. Now that's manual, takes a lot of uh, micromanagement. I don't like it, but uh, we're just doing it to, to really just as first partially just to see the functionality. Wouldn't have to, but uh, uh, just to get going, just to get moving on this. So now I'm looking ahead to think, okay, when we get the uh, 
cotton. It's going to come from down there in Chesapeake, Blacksburg, or Lynchburg. And, we, and we've got our clothing factory all the way up here in Wilmington. What are we going to do? So I'm already setting up. I don't want to lose any time on this. So I'm looking ahead and setting up um, the line. And here's something that should have been done long ago. I, 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 shame on me. Uh, is uh, upgrade that station. Wilmington, the key player, it should have been upgraded long ago. Now what I want to do is double track all the way down, well, <laughs> except for our weird intersection, so I'm going to have to go in front of it, go down to it, and then go past it and double track again. And we're going to double track all the way down to Salisbury. And we really could go through and, of course, and double track all over the place, but I'm just kind of doing it as I, I feel like I need it. But we're double tracking that to set up. What I intend to do is make a run down to Chesapeake. And uh, we don't necessarily have to go over the entire Chesapeake Bay, but we are going to build a pretty big bridge here. They really don't cost that much. So we're going to swing off of this uh, line and come down here and cross uh, a portion of the Chesapeake Bay. Find that little uh, end of the peninsula down there and build another bridge across and then work our way down the coast, the coast of the bay, so to speak. Go across the river and swing into Chesapeake. And that's 103,000 for that whole thing. No big deal. And then we'll double track it because we want it to move. And all we're doing right now is actually building something we don't need at all. This is for the future. This is to um, have that cotton line set up. But the track building course, you can pause. So why am I doing this? And you'll see in just a minute why I'm going ahead and doing this. Because we could pause and build the track anytime. So it's not going to hold us back. All right, so now we've got a route planned all the way down Wilmington to Chesapeake. But there's no cotton there, so what's the point? We're not far from our 60. We're over 50 now. 50, I can't quite read it. Over 50 with our uh, reputation. So it won't be long till we'll have the cotton. And so that train that we kind of stopped, we're just going to tell it to go up here and rejoin, uh, rejoin the work crew as a uh, hauling bricks down here to Richmond. Make sure that contract gets fulfilled. So it looks like now everybody's gainfully employed. We have an assignment and every uh, train is active and working. And what I'm going to do here, I'm checking why won't the, uh, the train seems to be slow to leave. So what I'm going to do here is put crossovers down here near the station. So I'm just going to have ability to go from the right track to the left and vice versa, left track to the right or top to bottom, bottom to top, however you want to think about it. And as soon as we do that, off that train goes. So that really seems to help to um, 
stop these weird uh, delays is just put put some crossovers out there in front so that they can uh, choose either track. Now we're going. Now here's the reason we built that that track down in Ches all the way to Chesapeake. We're just going to add Chesapeake as a station for a couple of trains, but not give it any orders because there's nothing it can do. We're not carrying passengers or mail, but we're going to send it to Chesapeake and send its mate down there as well and have those two trains sitting there ready and waiting as soon as we get the go ahead for the um, cotton. Okay, we'll keep doing our keep doing our research as before, and uh, now we've got two trains headed down there to be ready when the cotton is ready to be uh, taken up to Wilmington. Okay, another request for tools. So uh, we will try to honor that one as well. You can see we're using all of our tools right now. But uh, what I'm going to do here is instead of competing, and here I've got a goof up. I really thought I fixed, I changed these. I guess not. I want the coal to just deliver coal there. The train is taking the coal in. And somehow it... <laughs> and not doing what I, what I, well, that's not how I thought it was set up. Anyway, now the coal is just doing the coal, and we've got our little best friend in there selling the uh, steel. Now, what we're going to do with this train, this is the train that's making us money on tools because it's selling them to Baltimore and Washington. But we are going to just um, kind of blow up his route and say, why don't you go to Richmond and help us uh, close out our contract? So that way, we're not competing with um, with um, um, the Richmond uh, contract. Uh, it's going to again. It cuts into our money though. We're not making money on it. And here I did my classic goof up where I uh, I hit the um, label before I hit apply, because to me, I, th I think of the labeling as all part of the route, but it isn't, it's a special note. So now, now it should be right. Yeah, there we go, now it's working. At least it didn't take me three tries like it did last, in one of the prior episodes. Our reputation for the South is right on the verge of, of flipping over. We just need two more points. And really, uh, of course, it's a function of money, too. But uh, we could be down there doing more down in the South. I just kind of got really focused on the bricks and the uh, tools up here. Uh, one critique I'd give myself is go down South and, and earlier and start taking stuff into uh, Richmond that they can use.
Cheaper lumber, we don't care. Cheaper cotton, absolutely. We'd love to have cheaper cotton by 22%. So we want uh, Dinah there. We really want to hire Dinah. Who could we do without? And I'd, I think I know who I picked, as I recall. <laughs> We got rid of the lady who's the locomotives because we're not going to be running that many more locomotives. And that cotton, lower cotton prices is, is huge. So you can see I've tried to get the office people who organize your office have cheap cost, cheaper salaries and less space requirements. Plus the people who give you discounts on the key items you have to purchase. That way you can keep your margins up to at least reasonable. But I can tell you in this game, if you're not sick of hearing this, you must um, own everything in, in freight. You must own the supply, own the raw resource, own the factory, and, and then, then sell, sell, it, sell your own goods. That's, that's how you really have a solid economy you can trust because you know you've, we've seen how incredibly volatile our economy is, our, our little uh, money-making engine is very volatile. It goes way up and way down at a moment's notice. Particularly if you're trying to do contracts, which in any good mission, you're gonna be trying to do contracts and they they always have that catch that they don't, they typically don't pay you right away. There we go. Now we've hit our our numbers and we can do cotton. So what are we going to do? We've got our trains already down there ready to go. They can jump on that cotton field, start buying us cotton. We've got a 66% discount between our two employees. And we're going to run it up to the textile mill. The good news is we can sell it. We're actually going to make really good money on this run. These trains are going to make good money selling, selling, um, that cotton from Chesapeake up in uh, Wilmington. So that should keep our uh, uniform and clothing production going. That, that They will have no trouble keeping us stocked in cotton now. So the cotton problem is behind us. That's, that's the big challenge in this one, particularly if you come in like we did with a bad reputation with the South. The cotton is the problem, and we've just solved that problem. Now I'm looking ahead to see, can we get to 100? That's what we want to do, is get to 100 on our uh, rep with the South. And yeah, those, the tools will go a long way. We'll get other things. But what I really want to do is get down here and do what I mentioned a little earlier I should be doing is running stuff into Richmond from down here. We don't have to do gunpowder. We don't have to do uniforms or anything. But we've got some items we can run into Richmond and help us with our reputation.
I just wanted to make sure these trains are working. I'm now paranoid about trains leaving the station after having that problem, but it seems to be all fixed. So off they go. Now, the, the North wants tools. The question is, can we afford it? We've got that big contract with the South. If we get down here close enough, we can see that there are very few fuel, uh, few tools to uh, take anywhere, so we're going to pass on that opportunity. You can see our trains are making like 36,000 revenue every time they pull in there. Well, roughly, a little less than that because they, they uh, get diminished prices. But um, they're going to definitely make a profit for us. And the main thing is they're going to fuel uh, textile production. We've got our little... Um, <laughs> Forgot a good a little best friend. We got a little best friend uh, uh, moving the textiles over to the clothing, so we're good. And we're almost done with our uh, uh, research, so we are starting to look a little bit better. There we finished off the uh, bricks delivery contract to Richmond. So now we have to go in and clean up all those. Uh... All the uh, trains that were involved in it. And this is the one, this was doing the Washington deliveries. And we'll just uh, have it delivered to the city. Uh, almost any decent sized city in, on these maps need, need bricks along with everything else. So but here's another one for Richmond. So we'll just uh, have it again, deliver to the city for now. Because, oh, actually, I take that back. It's not the city. In Richmond, in the case of Richmond, we're going to have it delivered to the... Uh, uh, army camp to get uh, more brownie points. Now we've got a big tool delivery going so we're going to have to refuse that one. We can't afford two of them going. If the other one was nearly done that would be different. And here's a guy that can give us cheaper iron ore and we have enough room for him to work so we'll take him. And we're down to our final research and we'll be done with uh, researching the Forney. We'll have a fully upgraded train the rest of the way. And I'm running out of things to say, if you've noticed, <laughs> because we've got, we've kind of got it now. We're, we're in pretty good shape. We've gotten past the financial crisis, uh, the ebbs and flows of that. We've got enough cash now, I think, that uh, be very highly, highly unlikely that we would have so many purchases hitting at one time that we could go negative again. So we should be good on our money unless, unless I just go out and spend lots and lots of money on uh, rather foolishly. But now we've got the uniform production going. We've got uh, everything going well. Um, our, we're almost up to our 100 uh, on the south, and we've got... Uh, a tools contract running that will hopefully get us over that hump and um, I just want to I'm just double checking here to make sure that we have tools going to that contract and we do
Now, in looking at this, I notice one thing that's out of balance. The uh, I have a train that I have a train that's doing the um, wood for whiskey and a train that's doing our lumber for whiskey, and it's also doing the lumber for the uh, uh, tool factory alternator. Well, the tool factory is doing a better job of using up the lumber than the um, whiskey refinery because we're not getting um, grain up there as quickly. So either need to add more grain delivery or fix the lumber so that we have dedicated trains to each one because what can happen is you could be waiting and not able to unload at whichever one is slower which is also keeping the one that's faster from getting what it needs so it's easy to get out of balance on these things i think the the real answer would be run more grain uh, provided you have customers for the goods and uh, for the tools, we certainly do. So we don't want our tool production to slow down at all. Now here I'm taking some of these trains that were delivering brick directly to, well, to the Richmond Army Camp and I'm moving them over to the contract to try to make sure that we get that uh, contract done because it's worth more points at the end of the day. It's worth more reputation to us than just delivering the bricks uh, straight into the Richmond Army Camp. We see here we've been put on a leash. We've got uh, 1,200 days till the mission's over, so the timer has started. 1,200 days is a long time, and um, we're in very good shape here. Uh, we do want to make sure we keep that our, that uniform production going, but now that we've got the cotton problem solved, we've got cotton, we've got uh, leather. We that means we've got the textiles, the textiles and leather we need to make the clothes. The clothing factory is producing the uniforms. We've got them being shipped to Washington, so we should be in really good shape on that. And now what I'm looking at is, all right, we need to start, let's accelerate the um, uh, reputation building down south. So what we're going to do here is buy land and put in a brick works. Now there's already a brick works in Lynchburg. I did this for two reasons. One, to see if you could do it. And well, and two, to see how you how you tell them apart, you can't. Uh, uh, but I know it's that top one of the two. And three, because I don't want to be buying someone else's bricks to go over here to uh, Richmond. I want to take my own, which will be a lot cheaper at the end of the day, uh, to uh, buy the coal, bring it to the brickworks, make the bricks, and take my own bricks over and sell them to the army camp versus taking some competitor's brickworks. So now that we've got the money, we can do this kind of thing. We can start putting in our own industries. So setting up track from Lynchburg into Richmond and then back this way over to the coal mine. And we're going to bump up this station because it's going to get a lot of activity now. So we'll set up a train to bring coal into our brickwork. And there's no way, again, there's no way to tell which one's which. So 
I'm going to apply that. Then I'm going to click on it again, which unfortunately <laughs> starts changing that. I didn't want that. Get out of there. Now, make sure that that top one's mine. It is. All right, so the top one is the right one. So now I want to take from that top one, take the bricks, and drop them off. And at first, we'll drop them off against that contract. We'll make sure we get that contract fulfilled. So here I realize you can see them up there around Martinsburg, uh, the trains that are just kind of flying through there. Those are our new trains heading down here to do the coal and the bricks. And I realized I, I didn't really have a good way for them to go. They had to go through a pretty heavy traffic area to get, get down there. So you can see our uh, cotton delivery is fine. We are totally keeping up with the cotton. Now, I'm just curious, curious to see, are we actually making money? We are. We're spending a lot of money on purchasing materials, but we are making making money now. But you notice it's not flying up. Again, that's because of the nature of it. When you're doing a lot of contracts, you don't get that steady income. You get that gulps at, at, at different points. So here we go. Here comes coal. So those trains have managed to find the right place to go. And we'll bring coal in here to our brickworks, and we should start producing bricks and loading them. So, good deal. Now, steel is something else they'll take. There's a steel mill right there in uh, Lynchburg. There's ore and coal nearby, as we've said before. So, all right, let's just get into something else. So we're going to double track back to the coal line, because now we're going to need more coal. One, one train won't be enough, because we're going to need delivery into the steel mill and to the brickworks. So we're going to double track all the way back to the coal mine in Blacksburg. Then we're going to come off of that line and hook in uh, to deliver the uh, iron ore into Lynchburg to the steel mill. And double track that down to the intersection. Then I'm going to put a crossover there so that uh, so that the, the uh, trains can run on either track from that intersection over to uh, Richmond or, or Lynchburg or no 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 is that right yeah Lynchburg and we're going to put cross on both sides here to give them the same flexibility so now now the trains should should have no problems uh, going when there's any kind of free space I'm also going to learn from uh, what I did before and build a little crossover here off of that uh, big cotton line from Chesapeake and hook it into the line over here. Won't worry about crossover so much, but the purpose of that is to let these trains get down there quickly to uh, uh, start hauling the uh, additional coal and the iron ore that we want. And you can see because of research, we're, we're running four uh, iron ore up there at Martinsburg. 
uh, because we didn't have the research trains, but here we can run five with the with the newer train, uh, new, newer forties. We could upgrade uh, the other train, Martinsburg, but it's not. It's such a short line; it really doesn't matter. We can run six uh, coal where I think we were running five before. So uh, those uh, that research really pays off. And we're also going to have train dedicated train or trains dedicated to hauling the. Um, steel into Richmond to get us credit. Uh, we can sell it, make money, and get credit for it. If we look at the price of the uh, steel, uh, let's see, what was I looking at here? Oh, just trying to see if we're, if we're going to make these uh, things, if we're good on these. Um, uh, and here come these trains just flying down through, empty, empty forties upgraded uh, can motor. It's so nice to watch that compared to the speed of like uh, the John Bull or the Best Friend or whatever when you first start and you haven't researched really good trains. So now we've got our iron ore trains, we've got our uh, extra coal train, we've got our steel train. We're, we're ready to start getting some more brownie points with the South. Okay, somebody's starting to mow nearby, and I'm getting tired of talking anyway, so let's wrap this one up. We've made a ton of progress again. Uh, now we really do have an economy that works. Uh, before, we had one that made a lot of money, but it was also very volatile and had the potential to um, purchase us into a hole. Uh, but we've gotten past that with our little insurance policy with our uh, finance office. It actually bailed us out a couple of times, and now we're uh, still rocking and rolling. We're, we're solid now. We're producing uniforms. We've got our cotton straightened out and a good supply of cotton coming into our clothing factory. If we wanted to speed up, we'd just do another clothing factory. It'd be easy as could be. Uh, set one up maybe down in the south somewhere. It doesn't matter. Anywhere we wanted to, we could set. In fact, we could build our own textiles, our own clothing, our own um, another uh, meat business, and and set up a whole redundant system, and speed this up. But we're in no rush. We want to go ahead and and let this play out and build up some more brownie points. I mean, we could even consider slowing it down. See, there goes there goes some more uniforms right there. We could even consider slowing this whole process down. I did notice right there, uh, here's another spot we could double track because it's getting some business down the line into Washington. But um, we're in great shape now, so it's just a matter now of uh, finishing this off. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player, and I hope you'll join us for our next Railroad Corporation video. Thank you.